Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you proper recording levels in Reaper. This is one of those topics that has been going around for years with many different people having many different opinions on the subject. I've read some very good information on recording levels, but I've also read some very confusing and misinformation on the topic as well. So hopefully we can clear most of that up in this video. I should also reiterate that what we're discussing here is recording levels, not playback levels. Once your audio is recorded into Reaper, or any DAW for that matter, these levels are not as important. All bets are off. In fact, as long as you don't distort or go into the red on your recorded tracks, you should be fine. Just keep an eye on your meters and keep your faders below zero and it'll be very hard to overload your channels, even if you normalize each of your audio media items beforehand, which is what I tend to do because I like big waveforms. Now there are some console emulation plugins that prefer to see a certain level. And for those, I would recommend following their suggestions. But in most cases, if we avoid overloads or going into the red on our meters, we should be fine. But that's just for playback. Recording is a completely different story. Now, before we discuss recording, let me define the type of recording we're talking about. This is about analog recording. Taking something like a microphone and recording something with it or plugging a guitar or bass into a preamp or audio interface, or even recording an analog synth. But if you're recording from another application, that's digital, and that doesn't apply. The same goes for printing plugins or virtual instruments. That's also digital. And as long as you stay away from the red or overs, you're fine. But analog recording is completely different. And that's what we're talking about here. The first mistake that people make, and it's understandable because of the way digital captures audio, is the idea that you can record as hard as you want as long as you don't clip or go into the red. Unfortunately, when it comes to recording, that's not true. If you're recording even close to the red, you're recording way too hot. The thing is, most analog gear, and by analog gear, I mean microphone preamps, outboard compressors and EQs, analog mixing consoles, AD converters, and even the preamps built into your computer audio interface were calibrated to sound their best at minus 18. They were designed with this level in mind. And to get the best possible sound from this equipment, that's the average level we want to use. While it's true that some higher quality preamps will still sound great at much higher levels due to their extended headroom, there's really no benefit to using it. Minus 18 is where our gear is spec at. We'll have a generous amount of headroom, the lowest distortion, the best signal to noise ratio, and all that other fun stuff if we just record at or around this level. So with that said, let's see what this level is gonna look like in Reaper. Using a test tone, along with the most common analog sources we're going to be recording. Now at first look, Reaper looks a bit different compared to most of my tutorials. And the reason for that is I'm using a different layout for this video. If we go to the screen sets, I change my layout from the session mixer, which is what I usually use, to the small full meter, which looks like this. And the purpose of this is it makes it easier to see the meter as we're recording. So it suggests you check out this layout when you're doing recording. It makes it easier to see your recording level. So I have a bunch of tracks set up here that I'm gonna to record to, just so I can show you the desired level. We're gonna start off with a test tone. So I'm gonna go into record on the track, play a test tone into it, and then bring up my mic preamp. Now I'm using a plugin right here to simulate a preamp, but this represents your microphone preamp, an analog mixer channel that you're recording from, or the front of your audio interface where your microphones or guitars or bass are plugged into. So that's what this knob represents. So let's play a test tone and bring up the preamp. 
And we can see right over here is minus 18, which is the level I suggested as our perfect average level. If we keep bringing it up, eventually we're going to hit red, which is way too hot. In this case, about 19 dB too hot. So let's bring it down to make it perfectly at 18. And again, that's the perfect average level for our tracks. And by average, I mean that peaks can go above this point, but not too much, as you'll see with some of the other tracks. So let's start off with some drums. We'll go to our kick track, put it into record, and let's set the level for our kick. And I'm gonna keep the test tone on so we can see our perfect average level. Notice it's still going above 18, but it's kind of averaging at that point. Let's bring it down a bit. Go a bit higher. That looks pretty good. It's about 18, but it can peak a bit higher. But you don't want it to go above 12. That starts to get a bit too high. And like I said earlier, it's unnecessary. So let's add in the snare. Let's bring that up. We can go a bit higher. Once again, because the snare drum has a lot of transients, it can go a bit above 18, but don't let it get higher than minus 12. Now let's bring in the overheads. And with cymbal mics, because they're so bright, we could be even more cautious with this. Notice I'm going even lower than the kick and snare. There's really no benefit to printing any hotter. And finally, let's do the room mics. That feels perfect right there. It's not gonna hit our preamps too hard, so it's not gonna overload them or create distortion unnecessarily. So now let's turn off the drums. Let's check out a bass guitar. Bring up the preamp. Notice I'm keeping the average around 18, but it can go a bit higher, but never above minus 12. That's perfect for a bass guitar. Now let's try an acoustic guitar. Notice that acoustic guitars can get very dynamic, so you want to be careful with those and still keep them around minus 18. That's a pretty good level to me. Let's do an electric guitar.
And with electric guitar, especially a saturated or distorted sound like this, we can keep even lower because it's a little more constant and there's no real benefit to making it too hot. And then finally, let's check out a vocal. I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. You kept me close, you had me tied to the strings. Now you're watching it all fall apart. Now this vocal is a bit compressed. I'm compressing it on the way in with a hardware compressor. If you don't have one, you might want to keep the level even lower so that the peaks don't go above minus 12. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. It's not going to hurt to go too low, but because this vocal is more compressed, we can stay around minus 18. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. You kept me close, you had me tied to the strings, now you're watching it all fall apart. Now to me, that's a perfect recording level for vocals. And I think you get the idea. We wanna keep these levels a lot lower coming in to our computer. And if you wanna make them hotter afterwards, just bring up the media item volume after they're already recorded. But there's no reason to record any hotter than we did in this video. In fact, there's a lot of reasons not to, as it'll push your gear a lot harder than necessary. So that's pretty much it. That's proper recording levels in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.